again. He reached out from on high and took hold of me. He drew me out of the deep water. All right? That's Psalm, Psalm 18, 16. So here we go. I want you to look at this question. All you do is answer one. It could be loss of a job, loss of a relationship. It could be loss of your childhood. Loss. Loss of closeness or something. You can grieve. There's people that grieve the loss of their childhood. There's people that grieve the loss of uh, loved ones. There's people that grieve loss of jobs, loss of position. Maybe if somebody's lost a limb, they will grieve very strongly because they've lost that limb. Yeah. Yeah. A loss of a pet. Oh, I cried like a baby when Buttons died. I asked the Lord when Buttons was sick. It was on a Tuesday night. Buttons had been sick, and I wouldn't accept it. It said that he had, she had uh, leukemia, and I just wouldn't accept it. And, and I kept thinking she's going to get better. I kept praying for her. I said, God, you got to touch this dog. This dog was here for me when Mama died. This dog was here for me when Beverly died. This dog has been here for me when my kids were acting crazy. And she was really, really sick. And, and I remember on a Tuesday night, before I came to church, that day I was in, I was sitting, I sat on the couch and started working on my Bible, finishing up my Bible study. I sat on the couch and she couldn't even jump on the couch. So I picked her up and set her on the couch and she just fell on my bed and laid there with her head down. And I said, Lord, and I already told me I need to put her down. I said, I can't put her down, Lord, you gotta help me. And, and I said, I prayed right now, I put my hands on buttons. I said, well, Lord, she's been, she's been truer than anybody I can think of. Yeah, you know? yeah. And I said, Lord, you're going to have to help me. If you will, if you can set her die in her sleep, it'll be, it'll, it will definitely just take her. And she lay there with me. She just would breathe heavy. And she looked up at me. Uh, it was killing me. I got up to go to church. And when I come back home, she was laying on the couch where I left her. And Linda said, Honey, you better come in. And I went over there and she had just died. She was still warm. And so I took her and wrapped her in my t shirt that she'd been sleeping in. And I went and buried her at bear, in the foot of Beverly's grave. That's where I put her. And it was killing me. I dug the grave and put her out there. And 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 then uh, for, for night after night after night, I was used to her climbing up on the bed with me. You know, sleeping up under my arms, you know, uh, and I just sit there and cry. I cried myself sleeping several nights over that dog. And, you know, some people are going to say, have you lost your ever little mind? No. Look, God gives us love. That's right. That's right. They've, they've lost them. They don't feel that. Okay. So here we go. I want you to ask yourself these questions. You don't have, this is not a test. <laughs> but this is something, if you hear somebody talking this stuff, you can tell them, you know what? You're going through a grieving process. You're going through a grieving cycle. Whether you know it or not, you're going through it. And you need some direction to help you get through this thing. So you can go ahead and get on the other side of this thing and start healing. And to correctly go through a grieving cycle just means you remember with less pain and you actually start healing. All right? So here we go. Do you feel alone and isolated? You don't have to answer that now. You just you take a mental note. Are you alone and isolated? Do you feel you are mechanically going through the motions of life? Do you feel resentful toward God for allowing your loss? Do you ask why over and over again? I can think about in the major losses in my life, including buttons. I never was resentful to God, even my mom or my wife. But I did feel the first three other men. And I felt, and why, over and over again. Do you feel overwhelmed, not knowing what to do or where to turn? Do you feel emotionally distraught because of your loss? Do you have frequent daydreams about your loss? Do you feel angry or bitter over your loss? Do you have difficulty forgiving those who caused your loss? Do you feel frequently, or do you frequently dream at night about your loss? You know, I think I might have told you this, I don't know, but when Linda and I were really, really, really getting serious, I was really considering asking her to marry me. I said, Lord, I know that my covenant with Beverly is complete. She died, my covenant is complete. Okay? That's it. It's done. It's complete. 
So I still had this funny feeling inside. I, I, I just don't feel right. I need some help. Can you please talk to me, Lord? That night, in the middle of the night, I know it was a vision. It was not a dream because it was because it was just a, it was so real. I went outside in my front yard and Beverly walked up to me. And she put her arms out and she grabbed me and hugged me. And she said, you love me like nobody ever did. I love you so much. And she just hugged on me. And she looked at me and I was just amazed. And I was hugging her. And she said, I just want you to know everything's okay with Linda. And she vanished right out of my arms. And so the next week I asked Linda to marry me. But see, God... Because I was going through a grieving process, God said, okay, I'm going to help you. So, uh, do, you, do you see life as an empty struggle without much reward? <laughs> Didn't mean to make you cry. <laughs> do you feel helpless knowing how much others may, uh, do you feel helpless knowing how much others must be also suffering? And that aggravated me more than anything. When my wife died, there was people in her family that could care less about my kids suffering. They lost their mom. And they honestly could have cared less. And, and I, honestly, I kept saying, how can they not understand that D.C. Daniel and Bethany are hurting so bad? Reach out to them. And all they could do was reach out to each other and hold on to yourself. And I said, this is unreal. You know, I, so I would hold the boys. I would hold them too. I'd help them. I'd help them all. Okay? And then, yeah. Uh, do you wonder what kind of God would allow your loss? Do you view God as uninvolved or lacking compassion? Now, if you're answering two, three, four of these questions right now, I can tell you that there's grief going on in your life. Guaranteed. It could be from, like I said, the loss of a loved one, loss of a pet, loss of a limb, loss of a job, loss of your youth, loss of your health. Uh, I remember, this sounds kind of silly, but DC and I, when I turned around 40, DC and I were cutting up one day. And I told DC he couldn't stand this old man. There was no way. And we started doing setups. And I said, Times. And it's still, my baby was still alive, so I had to be around 38, 39, 40. And she timed us. And that young and double blind. That's the first time he ever beat me physically. And you know what? I grieved that. I said, I'm starting to get these gray hairs are starting to show. <laughs> Not just here, they're starting to show here. <laughs> so here it is. Regardless of your view of God right now, the Bible says in Nahum, Nahum 1, the Lord is good, a refuge in times of trouble. He cares for those who trust in him. I got a couple of translations here. The Lord is good, a strength and stronghold in the day of trouble. He knows, he recognizes, has knowledge of, and understands those who take refuge and trust in him. Last night, I was, uh, are you, I don't know, did anybody see that state patrolman that was here a couple of weeks ago, sitting by there? Well, Daniel, I was going to go to a baseball game for Emmy last night. Daniel called me up and said, Dad, why are you going out to baseball? Why are you going to the baseball game? I said, sure. He said, why are you going out to the baseball game? I said, what's going on? He said, I'm going to his house. He's got some medical problems. One of his dogs, one of his big old German shepherd chewed up a bunch of junk. And I said, I'll come help you. And so I'm over there, almost in the dark, very little light, got wires hanging all out, trying to get this stuff going on. And Daniel's over there working on the hot tub where the dog, that's why initially what started all this was the dog chewing the wires to the hot tub out there. And so, so we're out here working on all this stuff, and uh, I get a text from Linda. It says, pray for my mama. She's having another diabetic episode. And so I'm trying. I've got these wires hanging, and I wrote her. I said, would you want me? I'll, I'll do more and pray. Do you want me to go check on her? Because Linda didn't feel like going over. I said, do me go check on her. She said, if you don't mind. And so there I was, wet. Trying to hurry up and get wires done, so I finally got the lights working. Once I got lights working, I told Anthony, I said, Anthony, you finish it. And uh, matter of fact, he told me, he said, if somebody don't do something right, somebody get the ticket tomorrow. <laughs> 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 he was cutting up with us. But, uh, but, but uh, I left it, I left it, so I got it fixed, but I didn't put it back together, so I got to go. He said, you go. So I went to my mother in law's house. 
And we go in there, and actually her sugar was high this time instead of low. And they called, they called the service, and when they called the service, or called the hospital to talk about her problem, her doctor was on call. Isn't that cool? And so her doctor told her what to do. She was fine. I went around the house. She was cutting up. She was having a good time. My father was having a good time. My father said, God, it's so good. We called the hospital, and our doctor's on call. And I said, it is something. The Lord is good, or if you're in time of trouble, He cares for those who trust in He puts them in the right place at the right time. How many times do you think about it? you got something going on, and the right person comes along, by the time I was up on, on the church, putting a, we're putting a new roof on the church in Bath, what the original roof on the church? Daniel's trying to help me. He's a little bitty fellow. And he's got all these pulpotomies because 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 that cystic fibrosis he had made his teeth. He had temperature so hot that when the teeth came in, the, the, the teeth were brittle and they would just break off. And so he had false teeth. And this, the front had fallen out. The doctors don't worry about it. I'd had them replaced them four or five times. But he said the whole bottom is here. And him and DC were trying to move the shovel. And DC turned around and hit Daniel right in the mouth and knocked that tooth out. And all I could think of was, here's another $1,000. And this time I didn't have insurance. But he had it done, I had the insurance. I didn't have insurance. And I was up on top of the roof and I said, Lord, you know I don't have any insurance. And this boy needs to go to the dentist to make sure his mouth's okay. Can you help me? Is there something? Can you help me, Lord? That's what I said. Can you help me? And about that time, I was working with one of the guys from the church who owned it. A mechanic shop. And about that time, a car pulled up in the front of the yard and he hauled up. And that guy said, You got my stuff ready? And I said, uh, Who is that? He said, Oh, that's a dentist. I'm working on his car. And I said, Really? He said, Yes. I said, Hey, you got a minute? And I run down and said, Come here, Daniel. And I went and showed him, I went and showed him the tooth. He says, Don't mess with it, it's fine. Everything's cool. It was getting ready to come out anyway. I know you didn't know that. I knew it was getting ready to come out anyway. Everything's fine. You don't, don't take it back. Don't put any more teeth put in. It'll be fine. And you look at Daniel now. Yeah, he's fine. Amen. He could bite a left behind into it and not get shot. <laughs> but, but his first set of teeth were, were kind of rough. Uh, God knows how to help us out. And I trust him for that, don't you? Amen. Do we have any questions, any any comments? Anybody got anything they want to say uh, about grieving? Yeah, oh yeah, that's what they said. They said uh, they asked about the dog and the big old German Shepherd, great old big German Shepherd, and his head was big as a bear. <laughs> and they asked me, they said something about that dog was chewing, and me and Daniel looked over and I said, chewing on that wire. I said, and Daniel said it before I get out of my mouth. Daniel said, that's a self-correcting problem. I said, we hope, we hope you don't chew anything else, she said. And I said, if you need those wires out where you can get to them again, that's a self-correcting problem. And I said, you better thank God that your dog's still here. Amen. Because, I, I mean, he ought to have been a hot dog. <laughs> a hot dog with plenty of chili. <laughs> and plenty of ketchup. Ah! And she was for somebody that two-year-old German shepherd out there car and they found him carried it to a animal kill and the dog hurt too bad so they advertised and somebody's already adopted that's cool now, now the, the Wal walmart and greenville they found in the dips and dumpster in the back out right there they found a lady severed head <laughs> in the walmart out right there and they had a note attached to it that said i got no body <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, Lord, yes. Uh, Y'all might not know this, but you know some of the funnest people to be around, believe it or not, some of the funnest people to be around is funeral directors. You know why? Because they, you wouldn't think they are because because they're doing what they do. But if they don't, if they don't get a sense of humor, they're in trouble. I want to tell you this though. 
One day I went to Paul's funeral home. Y'all can ask him. Y'all can ask. Uh, uh, I can't think of his name. Wow, wow, wow. Billy? Not Billy. Oh. Huh? No, 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 no. Uh, they got it. Max brother. Bobby. Bobby. I came up at 11, I had an 1130 funeral. So I came up at 11 o'clock and I just bought me a rubber chicken to play with. And I used it out here for something one service. And I had it in my car. And he said, what's that? And I reached over to the grand and his feet and said, that's my lunch. I said, y'all won't ever feed me. Y'all won't ever feed me. So here. And they got laughing so hard that when we got ready to walk in or in the front of the church, in front of the sanctuary, and they're bringing the coffin up. And all of a sudden, Bobby starts telling the other guys about me having a rubber chicken and trying to feed them dinner. And they got laughing so hard that they didn't even, they, they just stopped and left the coffin right there. And I said, fellas, they're still laughing. I said, fellas, I couldn't believe I was the serious one now. I said, fellas, you need to get yourself together because we got to carry this coffin down the aisle. <laughs> and they just had to wait a few minutes because they get out of their system and then they went down. But honestly, these guys, these guys, because of what they do, some of the guys just have a tender spirit, but other guys have a strong sense of humor because of what, what they do. One thing I can tell you is, if you go to the funeral home, don't eat the barbecue there. <laughs> All right, I'm playing. I'm playing. That's what I told somebody the other day. You know, a lot of people wanted to have a stepmother, so you know what they done? What's that? They buried their mama under the steps. <laughs> All right, ready? Let's pray. Father, I love you, Lord. I praise your name. I thank you for your grace and mercy. And I thank you, God, for helping us to understand grief and helping us to get through grief. Lord, help us also understand, Lord, that to have a light spirit or a sense of humor will also help us through grief. But if we're not careful, that sense of humor will help us deny the grief. We don't need to deny it. We need to accept it. But we need to move forward with it. And know that you got our back. In the name of Jesus, we love you. We praise your name. And the church said, Amen. Amen.